So the company Elegoo got in contact with me a while ago and asked if I would like to review one of their printers, their new Elegoo Mars 2 Pro printer. And because I already owned the Elegoo Mars, the first Elegoo Mars, uh, I thought I was actually in a good position to review their latest version because they've apparently made a number of improvements to the design that I think sound pretty good. So I agreed and they sent it to me for free for review. But of course, the opinions I'm going to give here today are my own. Now what you see in front of you here is on the left my original Elegoo Mars. This is the silver and orange version, but the red and black, similar to what you see here on the right, uh, is I think more common. And on the right we have, of course, the uh, Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. This, you know, if you just look at these two, they're extremely similar in design, and if I had the red and black one, you'd barely be able to tell the difference between them. But there are some differences that you can see if you look closely. For example, the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro has a USB port on the front, whereas it's on the back of the regular Elegoo Mars, which is, uh, I think for some people anyway, definitely an inconvenient location. I haven't found it to be a big deal in my case because I can access the back just as easily as the front where I have my, my printers uh, located, but certainly I think having it in the front is probably the better choice. Uh, the Mars 2 Pro also came with a gasket like this, made out of silicone, I believe, that you're meant to put on the bottom of the uh, lid here to make it a little bit more airtight, but I quickly gave up on that because it kept falling off, and it didn't really seem to serve much of any purpose either. I don't find the resin to be particularly bad-smelling or anything, so maybe that's an example of a uh, change that's not <laughs> that important. Uh, but, you know, there are a couple of very important changes, which I'm going to talk about uh, right now, and I think will may be the focus of this video, basically. Uh, one is, well, it's, this is the more minor of the changes, but uh, the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro has a bit bigger build plate than the Elegoo Mars. Let's take a look at that. All right, here we are. This one on the right is, of course, the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, and this one is the regular Elegoo Mars. And if you hold them up to each other... I think you can tell. Let's see if I can make this obvious. The Mars 2 Pro is a bit bigger. It's wider and a bit longer as well. This may not seem like a big difference, and it's not the, you know, the most important difference certainly, but I have found when I'm laying out models on the Mars 2 Pro's build plate that it is easier because you have that little bit more space. So certainly it is an advantage, and you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't dismiss it uh, just because it doesn't seem like it's a very big difference. Now the resin vats for the two printers are basically, as far as I can tell, exactly the same size. These are different shaped ones because this is the metal one that comes with the Elegoo Mars II, and this is the uh, plastic replacement vat that they sell in packs of two so that you can have like different types of resin on hand without having to drain that every time. So I, I'm glad that it looks, I haven't actually tried it, but it looks like you can use those replacement vats as well on the new one. So that'll be handy. If we look on the top of the printer, you can see the actual uh, LCD screen that they use to print with, and that is where we'll see, I think, the most significant difference between the old Elegoo Mars and the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. You certainly can't tell just from looking at it, but the regular Elegoo Mars, which we see here, has a traditional LCD screen, which is used to mask the UV light that comes up from below, and that's how you actually print things. The Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, on the other hand, has a monochrome screen, which you might think is worse somehow than a traditional screen, but in fact, having a monochrome screen on a resin 3D printer like this allows you to print both faster and have the screen itself last longer. So that's actually a significant benefit. I've heard different numbers with regard to how fast the new printer is compared to the old one, but uh, you're supposed to be able to print with layer times of maybe two seconds as opposed to eight seconds or longer for uh, some of the other printers that I've used. So that should be a significant time saving, maybe 
three or four times as fast. We'll see if that actually pans out. Uh, also, in terms of the screen durability, I can't really test that during the course of this review, but my uh, longer Orange 30 screen, when I was doing the review of that, did die a little over a month after I got it. So, uh, you know, the traditional screens don't last super long, and if this one can last significantly longer, it will definitely be a welcome change. By the way, the first reviews I saw of this printer mentioned how easily the screen was scratched because it didn't have any glass over the top of it, and I think that was actually a manufacturing error because mine does have the glass at this point, and I don't really think that's going to be a problem moving forward. As of the making of this video, the new Season 2 of The Mandalorian TV show is going to be coming out in a day or two, so I thought in honor of that I would take some of the designs that Desert Octopus has been making of vintage-inspired Mandalorian figures and uh, print them on this new printer and see how it does, and maybe we'll do one or two other things as well. Well, that doesn't look right. I ended up stopping the print early because it obviously wasn't adhering to the build platform, so I tried again. And this is what happened when I tried another set of models. You can see it's not adhering on the left or the right side this time. Long story short, after a little bit of experimentation, I discovered that the default settings in Cheetubox for the Yellow Gumaris 2 Pro have the exposure settings a bit too short and it seems that that was causing the problem I was having here. I went and changed the default setting of 35 seconds to 50 seconds, and that seemed to totally eliminate any problem I had with adhering to the bed. So as you can see, this came out fine after I changed that setting, but I did have one other problem with prints failing. That was when I was trying to do the large Blurg model. Now this one apparently had just the support material print and nothing else, although I did find out that the rest of the model was kind of stuck to the bottom of the resin vat. It turned out that once I changed the per layer exposure settings in Cheetubox from 2.5 to 3 seconds, this problem also disappeared. So I think there are some issues with the default settings in Cheetubox, at least with the uh, ABS-like resin that I'm using. So these are the final settings that I ended up using for most of the prints in this video. So here you have all of the parts that I printed for the Mandalorian figures. I'm not going to show uh, the assembly of all of these because I've done that in several other videos and, you know, it's all kind of the same. But I did want to show you what they look like after they were all printed and cured and cleaned up a little bit. I found in my testing that the printer probably was roughly twice as fast as the original version of the Elegoo Mars. I could print a full set of parts for one of these figures in a little over two hours, which is actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and put these together. And here we have the figures all assembled, and I think they look really cool. I had planned to paint them as well for this video, but I kind of ran out of time for that, so maybe we'll do that another day. And, you know, it's not directly related to uh, the printer review in any case. So I want to give you a, a bit of a closer look at some of these guys. We have uh, Mandalorian, Mandalorian himself, Mando. Uh, now this one, there's various ways you could uh, sort of display this guy. He's got several accessories you can use, such as this uh, rifle here. 
And he's got a backpack, jetpack, like this. He's got a version with a, you know, whatever this is, kind of a cloak. Uh, I haven't actually glued this on here as of yet, but, well, I'm just going to leave it on there for now. Uh, you may have noticed that he's got a uh, an actual head underneath here, so if we take that off, you can see that, which is a cool, you know, detail there, although I'm afraid if we do paint this, that as soon as you put the head on, or the helmet on, rather, it's just going to scratch the heck out of the paint and it'll be kind of ruined so I don't you may have to decide whether you want the helmeted or non-helmeted look and just sort of stick with one or the other but yeah pretty pretty cool um, some of these also have a little bit of trouble standing up unless you get them just right here we have the armorer she does not have a removable helmet because we don't actually know what she looks like but uh, this is a very cool version of the character, I think. She also comes with some accessories, like these little tongs. And, of course, her hammer. Which, I haven't actually tried to make her hold these. I'm not going to try it right now. I I think it'd be maybe a little tricky. That's one thing with these, um, these resin figures. Even with the ABS-like resin that I'm using... They lack some of the rubbery qualities of, say, a real vintage Star Wars figure. And, you know, with those, you could kind of shove something into their hands and it would give enough that they would hold it. With these, I'm a little afraid that they might just crack off. Here we have the child, uh, one of several sort of variations on the character. We have the uh, child and its little floating crib, which I think looks really awesome. I haven't done any kind of, you know, beyond some very basic cleanup, I haven't done any anything to really uh, clean these up very much, so you've got some scarring on the bottom from the support material, which I could certainly fix. One thing about this, though, you may have noticed in the previous uh, shot where I was showing all of the parts separate that I had a clear version of the stand and in fact, this is the one that comes with uh, the Baby Yoda slash the child model. Uh, but I found that, first of all, the bottom here is way too thin. It's paper thin. I'm not sure why that is. I mean, it sort of does work. I tried it, but it doesn't feel very sturdy at all. And I also tried printing it in transparent resin, uh, which, you know, worked all right. But it has a tendency to yellow. And this... I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's fairly yellowed. And in the end, I decided I would just sort of remodel the stand my own, myself to make the bottom thicker. And then I reprinted it in the uh, same resin here. And I'll paint it black eventually. And here you have uh, the Baby Yoda version that's sort of sitting or laying down. And you can put him in there thusly. Presumably glue him in place or something, maybe. All right, next we have Queel, who's one of the ones that has trouble standing up. But I think this is an excellent sculpt of him. I really like the way that one turned out. And this is one of the ones that has complete uh, articulation in all of his limbs, which is nice. And the uh, arms are a little stiff. In fact, that one's working its way out of the joint there. There we go. But yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to have him uh, kind of sit down there. Here we have IG-11, and he's using this uh, kind of bag with a child in it. I wasn't sure who this was intended for, perhaps for the Mandalorian, but it looked better, I thought, on uh, this guy. And, you know, there are scenes in the show where he's kind of holding the child, so I thought this was appropriate. Uh, yeah, looks good. Now, one thing <laughs> that's kind of interesting about uh, this particular one is that it includes a couple of weapons, which, if you have been watching the channel for a long time, might be familiar to you. These are, in fact, my 
uh, models that I created of the vintage Han Solo blaster and Stormtrooper blaster. Now, of course, I created them for the purpose of printing them off at life size, and I've made videos about both of those, which you can see up here. Uh, but they've also been included through a uh, <laughs> sort of agreement with uh, Desert Octopus with his uh, model. And I was really blown away by how nicely these printed out at uh, action figure scale. Let's see if we can get a little better look at it. All the details are pretty much still there, and it really does look pretty uh, authentic, I think. I was I was impressed with myself. I'm not, you know, particularly good at 3D modeling, and these took a lot of work for me to do, uh, but I, I thought they came out pretty well. Now, uh, of course, we're kind of uh, ignoring the elephant in the room, so to speak, the blurg in the room way back there. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is uh, clear these guys out of the way a little bit so we can look at him in a bit more detail. Here we go. So now he's quite large and relatively heavy as you can probably tell. I did have to uh, cut off the tail digitally and then re-glue it back on because it wouldn't fit in the printer. This uh, mouth is supposed to be articulated, but boy, I cannot get it to move much more than that. And it was hard to get on, too. I had to file some of the parts down, so I'm basically not going to have it... Not, I'm not going to try and have it be articulated. Although uh, the arms here are articulated, and so are the legs, although they are relatively tight. I'm... Oh, that one came off. Oh, it broke. Oh, dear. Well, as I was saying, I think I'm just going to leave them as they are. I'll probably just glue them. Uh, you know, it is a little bit unfortunate that even with the uh, ABS-like resin that you cannot get quite the qualities that you need for uh, some of these action figures, I think. Still, they display really nicely. Now, one thing you may have noticed about this is that there's an empty saddle up here. And I have decided to get rid of the peg that's here that's supposed to attach in here and just allow it to be uh, sort of, you know, freely inserted because he is also, Desert Octopus has also designed writers for the Blurg. We have the Mandalorian here who could also have that backpack. I only made one backpack, so I'm, I haven't put it on there. And all you have to do is take that off and put him on. And there you go. We've got Mando riding his blurg. And we also have one for Queel, like that, which I thought was pretty cool. Now what was uh, what these have done is basically these are separate pieces with the legs and the saddle, and then you just print the top part of the action figure, and you can just insert it in there. You know, I probably want to glue it maybe after uh, you're done, but I wanted to show you what that looked like. Same with Queel over here. Just take him out of there. Or you can just have the empty saddle if you like. So I, I really thought this was clever. But I wanted to try, uh, in addition to action figures for this video, so another uh, a statue. I like to print statues with my resin printers. So I decided to go with something that was sort of related to the Mandalorian. In fact, it is, uh, some would argue anyway, the basis for the Mandalorian. It is a lone wolf and cub statue. This is based on a Japanese manga comic book. And they also made some live action movies with the same characters. The general idea is that it's a, a samurai who is tasked with uh, protecting a young boy, and you can sort of see where the parallels are in that. Uh, this statue here has been designed by Levin Archer, who is the person who designed the uh, Creatures of Cromsfall Cthulhu uh, models that I printed several of in my review of the Longer Orange 30. So he's definitely a talented designer. Elegu also sent along a bottle of their water washable resin, so I thought I'd try that 
with this statue, see how it works. The water washable resin seemed to work pretty well, it came out good, it does have similar qualities I think to their standard resin as opposed to the ABS like resin that I generally like to use, so it's a little bit more brittle. But you know, you don't have to use alcohol to wash it off, which is a nice bonus, especially in these times when it's so difficult to find rubbing alcohol anymore. But you shouldn't think that this resin is any safer necessarily than the other kinds of resin and you shouldn't allow it to rinse down the drain or anything like that. You need to be careful about how you dispose of, for example, water that you've used to wash off your resin parts. Here we have all of the pieces printed out and cured. I didn't have any problems with the printing. It came out just just perfect, I think, actually. If you look at the, the detail on this, it's very impressive. Uh, especially if we, I think, look at the heads here. You can see it came out really well. I did end up breaking off one or two of the pieces of hair that are on here, unfortunately, before I had a chance to cure them. And so I'm not sure... I may go with the uh, sort of standard head here without all the flyaways on the head, but uh, aside from that, I didn't have any problems. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, assemble this right now so that we can see what it looks like all together. So what's my conclusion about the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro? Uh, if it was exactly the same price as the other printers in the line, for example, the regular Elegoo Mars, I would, of course, recommend it without a second thought. It is, however, a bit more expensive. Uh, the regular Mars will often go for just a little under $200, whereas this one is a little under $300. So it's, you know, it is a significant increase but you have to keep in mind that with the regular Mars, you're most likely going to be replacing the screen, at least if you use it very often. Uh, probably, I'm guessing, just based on what they've said in terms of the lifespan of the, uh, the new screen, you're going to end up replacing a couple of times at least in the time it will take the, the new screen to wear out. And that's, you know, maybe $20, $30 each time. That's money you have to spend and also time you have to spend replacing it. And you do, uh, of course, get the uh, benefit of the faster prints as well with this machine. So I do think it's worth it for most people, probably. But, you know, obviously you have to go into it 
sort of understanding what the deal is. Uh, if it was just a matter of the faster prints, while those are nice, I'm not sure that would be enough to uh, make up for the difference in price for me personally. But when you include the uh, supposedly longer lifespan of the LCD screen, I do think it's probably worth it. Um, I'm going to leave a non-affiliate link to this uh, printer on Amazon just to, you know, you can so you can look at it. Uh, but I'm, I don't get anything from that. And, uh, you know, I don't really have any stake in this except that I've been a pretty satisfied owner of the regular Mars. And um, I'm happy to have the Mars 2 Pro now as well. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, do feel free to leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.